So welcome to this video on the empirical rule, which is part of the Leaving Cert Statistics course. Um, this appears on both Leaving Cert Ordinary Level and Leaving Cert Higher Level. Um, the examples we're going to do, the first one will be an Ordinary Level question and the second one will be a Higher Level question. So if you're looking for some help on the Ordinary Level paper with regards to the empirical rule, then watch this video through uh, for the first example. If you're looking for a Higher Level, the first example is a good um, idea of what they ask in an exam because the empirical rule has only been asked once on the higher level paper. So the second example is the actual higher level question that was asked. So the empirical rule has three individual statements and all three are displayed here, but I'm going to give you a little summary on the left as we go. So the first one is other 68% of the data that sits between one standard deviation either side of the mean. So that is mu plus or minus one standard deviation. They then, um, the second part of it is 95% sits between plus and minus two standard deviations. And the third part is 99.7% of the data sits between plus and minus three standard deviations of the mean. So that is nearly all of the data sits between three standard deviations. There's 0.3% that doesn't, and that's 0.15 in either tail. So that's so tiny. Just a little note at this point is here, for higher level, we don't generally talk about two standard deviations. We actually talk about 1.96. But this the empirical rule still says two. But as we get into the inferential statistics, we will be looking at it as 1.96. So let's look at the first example. So this is an ordinary level mock, but it gives us a good introduction. And uh, the mean height of a larger group of 15 year old girls in school is 163 centimeters. So there's mu and a standard deviation of 13, so that's sigma. Assuming the girls height are normally distributed, use the empirical rule to find the percentage of girls that are less than 176 centimeters. So the empirical rule, um, we're going to be dealing either with 68% and remember 68% is mu plus or minus one standard deviation and 95% which is mu plus or minus two standard deviations or 99.7% which is mu plus or minus three standard deviations. So let's try 68%. This is literally trial and error at this point because I want to find 176. So I have 163 minus 13 or 163 plus 13. Now 176 is bigger so it'll always be an adding on part. So this means between 150 and 176. Oh brilliant. Okay so we found 176. So what we've discovered is 176 is actually mu plus one standard deviation. And that was just through trial and error. So that was 163 plus one times 13. And that gave me 176. So that's where we came from. So let's draw this out. So here's my normal distribution. I know here is my center and I have here one standard deviation and that one standard deviation is 176. Now I know and this is minus one standard deviation. There's my mu um, and I know that that's about 150. I know that if I look between these two lines I have approximately 68% of the data. So is my answer 68%? Well no because Assuming that the girls' heights are normally distributed, find the, use the empirical rule to find the percentage of girls who are less than 1.76. So I actually also want everything here as well. So I actually want this whole thing. I want this whole thing backwards. So I am missing quite a substantial piece. I am missing 
this part here so i know i'm doing a lot of coloring on it hopefully it makes sense i'm missing this part here i need to kind of figure that out so one way we can do this and i'm just going to do um another little sketch that we can work on oh it's hard to work in dark color so if i know this is the midway line i know that there is 50 percent of my data here okay i then know that this is one standard deviation and if this thing here is 68 percent so let's go back to my 68 percent so there's 68 percent in here it is symmetrical my drawing might not look at it. it is symmetrical so that means each half must be about 34 percent so that's 34 percent and that's 34 percent which means that this piece here must be 34 percent so therefore the percentage of girls who are so the probability that x is less than 176 is going to be 50 percent plus 34 percent which is 84 percent and that's the percentage of girls who are less than 176 so that's kind of working backwards on our empirical rule so Example two is the higher level example, and this came up in the 2018 paper. The diagram shows um, the standard normal curve. This shaded area represents 67% of the data. Find the value of Z1. So Z1 here, it's not 68%, so it's just a little under one. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to our log tables um, on page 36, and we're going to work backwards. So we want to find 67%. So 67% is actually 0 0.67, and we want to find as close as possible to 0 0.67 in the main body. And when we get it in the main body, we want to work backwards and get the Z score. Okay, so we actually have that exactly. And the probability that Z is less than or equal to uh, 0 point, sorry, I've lost it now. Six, seven. Sorry, so it is zero point four four, and that is zero point six seven, which is exactly what we wanted. So therefore, Z one is zero point four four. So part B, the percentage results in a maths exam for a class had a mean mark of 70 and a standard deviation of 15. So this is important. So there's a mean and here's standard deviation. Percentage results in an English exam had a mean of 72 and a standard deviation of 10. So they're not the same. So I'm going to say this is the mean of maths and this standard deviation of maths. This is the mean of English. And that's the standard deviation for English. The results in both exams are normally distributed. Mary got a 65 in maths and a 68 in English. In which exam did Mary do better relative to the other students in the class? The easiest way to do this is to work with z-scores because remember z-scores are a way of standardizing our information so it's easier to compare. So let's deal first with maths. So in maths there was a mean mark of 70 and there was a standard deviation of 15 and we have an x of 65. So z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. z is equal to 65 minus 70 over 15. And that works out as minus 0 0.33. So let's talk about English then. So in English, there was a mu, a mean of 72. So she did get higher in English, but the mean is also higher and the standard deviation was less. So it was less spread out. So that may impact on it. Let's wait and see. And that's 68. So Z is equal to X minus mu all over standard deviation. Z is equal to X minus mu 72 over standard deviation for Z is equal to minus. 0 0.40 so we're looking for who where she did better so she did better so let's just i'm going to just change this this is z for maths and this is z for english so based on what we've discovered and um, the z score for maths is better than her z score in english 
because minus 0 0.33 is bigger than minus 0 0.40. So remember it's negative, so the smaller number is actually closer to zero. Um, so in which exam did she do better in? And the answer is maths and the justification is above. Okay. So in English, so we're talking English, so I'm going to bring in my English information. So the mu in English was 72, the sigma in English was 10. Um, so 15% were awarded an A grade. So let's sketch that out. So let's say that's the top 15%. That means if that's the top 15%, there's 85% below that point. So what is this Z score here? So we look up in our log tables, probability that Z is less than or equal to something must be 0 0.85. So we wanna find the closest we can to 0 0.85 in the body of the table. Um, and 0 0.85, we have 0 0.8508, which is as close as we can get, and that's 1.04. So my Z score is 1.04. So what we're trying to find is the least whole number mark that merited an award in of an A grade in English. So I'm going to go back to my Z score formula. So I have X minus mu over my standard deviation. I have 1.04 is x minus 72 all over 10. Bringing that through, 10.4 is equal to x minus 72. Therefore, x is equal to um, 82.4. So I'm adding 72 to both sides, so 82.4%. But they want the least whole number mark that merited an award of an A grade. Now we wouldn't round down to 82, because if we round down to 82, then more than 15% of students would get that grade. So the grade would be 83%, and then it would be a little bit under 15%. So 83% of students. So part three, so we're getting to the empirical rule part. So it says using the empirical rule or otherwise, estimate the percentage of students in the class who scored between 52 and 82 on the English test. So again, I'm dealing with English, so I'm dealing with mu being 72, um, and my sigma is, again, 10. So my empirical rule, so 68% is between one standard deviation, 80, oh, sorry now, 95% is between two standard deviations, and 99.7% is between three standard deviations. So like the last example, we're gonna work it out. So we're gonna have 72 um, minus one standard deviation and 72 plus one standard deviation. And that gives us 62 and 82. Okay, so we've hit on one of our numbers which is this one here. Okay, so 82 is one standard deviation above. So let's go again. So we're gonna have 72 minus two standard deviation, 72 plus two standard deviations. And that gives me 52 and 92, and I've hit on the second one. Okay, so drawing that out, I have my center point here. There's one standard deviation. There's two standard deviations. Here, there's minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations. So on the left-hand side, we go down two standard deviations. That's 52. And going up on this side, we go up one standard deviation, and that's 82. So I'm looking for the percentage between these two points. So I know that 68% sits between one standard deviation, so half of that must be 34%. And 95%, um, I know that there will be half of it sitting in here, which is about 47.5%. That means that the probability that it's somewhere between 52 
and 82 using the empirical rule is 47.5% plus 34% and that gives us 81.2%. Now it did say or otherwise so you could use Z scores in this case. If you worked with Z scores you get a slightly more a slightly different answer and the reason you get slightly different is because of the idea of the two standard deviations we use it um, more accurately at a higher level and we generally say with Z scores 1.96 so you will get a slightly different answer and both were accepted. They did say empirical rules so it is a good chance to play and to try the empirical rule.